Relics have existed in the Catholic tradition since at least 167 CE, when the bones of the martyred St. Polycarp were collected by his fellow Christians to be reserved for veneration. Since then, relics have been an integral part of the Catholic faith. They serve as mythologized vesicles of saintly divine healing, tools of social political power, and symbols of city-states. Relics come in three different flavors which correspond to different levels of heavenly power. First-class relics, the most powerful, are the bodies and body parts of saints. Second-class relics are possessions of the saint or things the saint touched while they were alive. Third-class relics, the least powerful group, are objects that other relics have come into contact with. The saint, having lived a pious life, was believed to reside in the communion of saints in heaven. Additionally, the Catholic tradition sees the physical body as sacred, believing that after final judgment, the earthly remains of those in heaven will rise again. In this system, relics are viewed as conduits to the divine. In invoking the saint through veneration of his or her relics, people sought intercession, or saintly assistance, in prayer to God. The seeking of saintly intercession became even more prominent in medieval times, a phenomenon that can be viewed as a reflection of the feudal political system of the time. Shrines and churches built in honor of the saints whose relics they contained became commonplace. Local Catholics brought offerings to a saint's shrine, and in turn, the saint granted them protection and performed miracles. Similarly, if the saint or his or her community were attacked or disrespected, the saint would impart divine punishment, usually in the form of mental or physical illness, until atonement for the transgressions were performed. Later, in the late medieval and Renaissance Italy, there was an intense somatic nature of sanctity. Saints often underwent physical torture through life, and the most holy of saints, such as St. Francis of Assisi, were even believed to possess the stigmata, or wounds of Christ. These physical signs of piety continued posthumously with images of the Holy Family and crucifix, emanation of blood, water, and milk, and incorruptibility of the body seen as signs of piety. In order to verify corporal signs of sainthood, an understanding of the range of normal anatomy had to exist. This corresponded with an increase in private autopsies to determine cause of death during the 13th through 16th centuries in Italy. Private examination of the body was common and approved. Only public dissection and the division of the body were feared in popular belief. However, this division was not feared by saints, as it allowed for an expanded geographical range of their supernatural powers. These powers most commonly include miraculous healing properties. Miraculous healing via relics often showed similarities to the miraculous healings performed by Jesus as described in the four Gospels. For example, placing relics upon the eyes of the blind to restore sight and using second-class relics such as the diaries of saints to drive out demons were common miracles. Additionally, the bones of saints were used to eradicate plague. In 1624, the bones of St. Rosalia were stumbled upon by a hunter. Appearing in a vision, Rosalia instructed the hunter to parade her bones through the streets of Palermo, Italy, and after doing so, the plague ceased to afflict the city. Saintly healings were not, however, just miraculous events. Saints, myths, and healing legends were also constructed in order to gain socio-political power, and if a city or church's relics were less prestigious than surrounding ones, then bishops, nuns, merchants, and city officials would often purchase, steal, and fabricate relics and construct myths surrounding the relics to enhance their prestige and draw economic gain from pilgrimage. Competition for dominance between Aquelia and Venice illustrates this point vividly. In the late 8th century, Charlemagne had the Roman city of Aquilia rebuilt in order to fortify his control of the region. One problem existed, however. Venice was a very powerful neighboring city-state. To compete with the prestige of Venice, historic myths of ancient Aquilian saints were constructed. Specifically, the founding bishop of Aquilia, St. Hermagoras, and his deacon, Fortunatus, received major facelifts. St. Hermagoras was portrayed as a hand-picked disciple of St. Mark the Evangelist, who had been sent to the region by St. Peter. Through St. Mark, Aquilia was able to directly connect its saintly patronage to Paterian legacy, and thus closely associate itself with Rome, the hub of religious power in Catholicism. This thus vaulted Aquilia over its powerful neighbor, Venice, and cemented them as a sacred location. 
The Venetians were not to be outdone, however, and in epic fashion moved to one-up the Aquilians for socio-political power in the region. St. Mark the Evangelist's remains resided in the Mediterranean port city of Alexandria, Egypt, which at the time was under the control of the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate. In 828 AD, shortly after the reconstruction of the cults of St. Hermagoras and Fortunatus, two Venetian merchants, depending on the source, either were implored by the Coptic Orthodox Church to save the body of St. Mark, or outright stole the body. However the body was procured, St. Mark the Evangelist was translated to Venice and installed as their new patron saint, thus increasing their socio-political power in the region. It turned out, though, that they forgot one very important thing, St. Mark's head, which to this day still resides in St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Cathedral in Cairo, Egypt. Patron saints of cities were not just used as pawns of political power, though. They also were proud symbols of cities as evident through St. Januarius' relationship with Naples. St. Januarius is a 3rd century Italian bishop and martyr whose blood was collected into two vials by a woman after his death. As expected, the blood dried up and solidified. However, on special occasions, thrice annually, the blood is observed to miraculously undergo liquefaction. These liquefaction events are believed by Neapolitan community to directly affect the well-being of the city, and failure for liquefaction is thought to correspond with tragedy. For example, legend has it that the 1527 plague and 1980 earthquake followed failures for the blood to liquefy. All in all, relics have been an integral part of the Catholic faith, occupying multiple roles. They serve as vesicles of saintly divine healing, pawns for social political power, and symbols of city-states. They have been involved in international heists, have legends constructed around them, and are even bought and sold. Nevertheless, their importance remains to the modern day.